Okay, our next speaker is Lise, and she's going to talk to us about a, our websites. That's something everybody needs these days. Hi, thanks everybody for the uh, opportunity to be here and talk to you. Um, let's see, I've been doing websites for quite a long time, starting in the late 90s. Um, and I've done them for com mostly commercial enterprises and, and with a marketing aim, and lately, of course, uh, in the political arena. I've been doing political campaigns since the 1980s. Um, my very first one was the uh, Dianne Feinstein recall election where after the Moscone milk murders where she had to run for uh, mayor of San Francisco and become elected. So, and that was victorious, and, and I've worked on many, many campaigns since then. But the uh, websites, uh, since the late 90s. And did you need one if you were running for politics in the 90s? I don't think so. Did you need one in 2000 or 2004? Maybe, they would help. They certainly would help with the press. Did you need one in 2008? Definitely. Do you need one today? Definitely. A good website is like washing your face before you appear in public. You definitely want a clean, shiny, sparkly face. Maybe take the compact out and do a little bit of touch up. But everyone needs a website now. It's your main communication tool that can work hard for you uh, with the greatest dollar value returned for the most number of eyeballs on the page. It costs you a lot of money to print. It costs you a lot of money to mail. But your website, after it's initially set up, is free. So you've absolutely got to have one. And I'm just going to go through a couple of rules on websites uh, and things to think about. I don't, um, can we show any here? We can't get on? It'd be great to see some of your websites. Yeah, we're yeah and, but I'm not really here to do a commercial for uh, Green Dog campaigns. I'm here because of you. Okay, and I, I really don't want my comments to necessarily sell me because what I want to do today is to model for you what I want your website to do. I want your website to talk about you, but I want you to talk to your audience mostly. It is just as much about your audience, what they need to hear from you and what they want to hear from you, as it is about your statements. Okay? You're having a dialogue. Your website is a dialogue with your audience. Do you know your audience? That's one of the first questions I want to ask you. Do you know what they want for themselves? Do you know where they live? How does the geography stack up? Who's going to vote for you? At Green Dog Campaigns, we tend to talk to people with progressive and environmental values, and it's almost pointless for us to talk to the religious right. Okay? So we're not even going to go there. That's not going to be part of our dialogue. But we might find some parity with them on some economic issues. Well, okay, let's balance our books. Let's look at pension reform, that sort of thing. So. Your website design should work very, very hard for you. But it's not just about visuals. It's about visuals and textual components. And it's about moving components. And it's about interactivity and links, those four things. What are the pages you absolutely must have in your website, it depends upon whether you're a small, local, organized campaign or whether you're going to have to cover a lot of ground and a lot of territory, like all of Northern California up to the Oregon border, like some of our congressional candidates are. You might have very different approaches for your website. For a small campaign, you probably don't want it to have what I call in retail parlance a big storefront presence. Okay. Do you all remember the uh, Barack Obama 2008 website? Yes. Do we, are we all familiar with the term above the fold? How many are not? Okay, everybody knows what above the fold is. Oh, above the fold? Okay, so that's, that's good. If you look at the 2008 Obama website, 
Everything above the fold works like a storefront. Big, big banners. You volunteer here, you walk here, you attend this event here, you donate here, and then somewhere on there's a picture of Barack Obama, and somewhere on there is the branding in the header. That was considered a state-of-the-art design for the time, and it had to work really hard to, to generate a base of volunteer supporters and develop a conversation with them. It had to develop excitement by getting people active. But let's be real. If you're running for sewer board, you're probably not going to get a lot of motivated volunteers to walk door to door. You might be able to get your family. You might be able to get some people you play cards with. You might be able to get a few old and dear friends to walk with you. But you're not going to have this big volunteer base. So who is that website for then? What's its job? Well, it's got to do, it's got to turn visitors into voters. And it's, if you get a chance to do it, your voters into volunteers, okay? But if you're not gonna have this big volunteer movement, you don't need all that. You've just gotta get out the facts. It should have a very simple two or three paragraph, two is better, statement, by the candidate that summarizes their value to the audience. Their value to the audience. And how they're going to add value back to the community. It's absolutely essential that it convey that. It's essential that it has a strong brand because it's not the only component of your campaign, but it has to work with all other components of your campaign consistently. You don't get your nephew, the guy with the green hair and the nose ring, to do the design in a closet away from the rest of the campaign committee and your consultant and expect to have messages that come through and, and talk to people and reach them. Okay? It, because it should be part of an integrated campaign where your branding is carried through all the way. Okay? You should have a bio. Especially if you're a first-time candidate, you should have a really strong bio with some older pictures of yourself, some pictures of family, okay? some heartfelt type stuff, not just people staring at the camera or holding a drink. God forbid holding a drink. Did you know that the royal family will not allow their pictures to be taken with food or drink in their hands? I think it's a great rule. Don't let yourself get caught. We have some last seconds now. Oh, we do. Who do we have here? We have Shirley Zane. Oh, we have Shirley yeah. Zane. Yeah. Okay, this is a this is one of our our newest ones here. Um, content is king. If I want you to have a takeaway from this conversation, content is king. I'll say it one other way: garbage in, garbage out. Have good pictures that have warmth that speak to your positive values and talk about connections with those people who you aspire to represent and serve at the highest possible level. If I could tell you one word, uh, one phrase that I want you to take away in terms of your messaging, your textual messaging to the people you're going to represent is how can you serve them to the highest possible value, okay? If you can explain that to them, you've got it. So anyway, your bio, you definitely need your bio. You definitely want your endorsements. If you have run for office before, you should have your legislative accomplishments very front and center. Not necessarily on the home page, but certainly a strong link to them. Okay? You should have a fundraising vehicle. Okay. Can you get Act Blue? Unfortunately, if you're running for um, a local down ticket race, you can't have Act Blue, but you could have a PayPal system or any other system that is secure. Make sure that you post security on your site and you have some kind of a security notice and make sure you have um, a uh, certificate, a security certificate at your hosting site. 
you want your data and your, um, your visitors' data to be protected on the way in and on the way out. Okay, so I think that's just, just about it for the bare essentials of what you need. This site we did for Shirley Zane was a, a WordPress-driven content management system. It's kind of got all the bells and whistles and it's kind of the groovy way sites are being done today. But it's, it's a little heavy sometimes on the um, pulling it off design possibilities. We can do them a lot cheaper if we just keep them in basic HTML and make the changes month to month, okay? So when you um, look for a design firm, make sure that you have one that, can, that fits the scope and size of your project and make sure that you can get the, the project done in time, that you look at your timeline. Um, I have, do have a question for our member of the press, Brad. Do you visit websites? Okay, so this is the other audience that you want when you do a website design, is I like to think that the press is one of my first outreaches with the website. So you better make sure that everything you're saying in that website is factual. There's one thing the press loves to bird dog down, and that's the people that lie on their resumes. You don't, wanna, you don't want to misstate the facts at all. And I think you want to be largely positive and affirmative of your values. I would not use your website to attack the incumbent. You can put the facts in there, but you can, you can tone down the rhetoric. You'll be taken more seriously, and you'll come off looking a lot classier, which is, you know, I think what I like my people to look classy. I like my people to talk to the geography of the place they're running. We chose the California poppies for Shirley Zane. We had galleries of photos for her accomplishments. Textually, break up your text a lot. You know, use subheads, use bullets, use text of different color. You know, this is what trained designers do is they help the design achieve a hierarchy. If we go to the Harry Reid site, I did not do the Harry Reid site, but the Harry Reid for re-election is, is quite a beautiful site. People are talking about it. it uses unusual colors. It's got a good photojournalistic portrait of him. It's got what I call very, very strong hierarchy, where he's very, very big in presence. And the text messages have some very large type for certain very important statements, and then there's a descending hierarchy after that. Definitely want to get that in. Let's see. Photography. Let's get real. No deer in the headlights, holding food photos. If you're running a campaign, if you can't hire a good shooter, then find a good shooter in your area. You know, find someone that you know that knows lighting and knows how to take a good photo who can kind of take a good photo that's an action photo with people talking, the candidate engaged with the community, kissing babies uh, sometimes. You know, we, we recently did a, a shoot, we threw it together in about 20 minutes with the candidate where we walked down the street and found a house that just looked right for her constituency and it happened to have a dog. We happened to have a dog with us and so there was this this um, candidate talking to another woman and then this dog and this great house and it was a great setting and it talked about her being on the streets and meeting people and engaging with them in a really warm way. Um, it was a kind picture, okay? Go for those. Take your photographer or friend with you to events. But do a lot of outdoor shooting too. Um, I just rejected probably 500 different still photos from a campaign because there wasn't a single decent lighting situation in it. There were overblown highlights <laughs> and there were uh, backlit candidates. You know, if your candidate, plan for your shoot too with your personal appearance and your personal look. Um, have hair done, have makeup done. And try to have really current and contemporary photos unless you're talking about your biography and then you can have that picture of you where you weigh 20 pounds less. 
but don't mix, <laughs> but don't mix it within all the other stuff. Look contemporary, look dynamic, look engaged, look like you're part of your uh, community. Uh, let's see. Um, do you need um, a, a professional design team? I think so. I think more and more we're seeing this. There are templates and there are kits where people say they can do your website for $25, but don't believe them. They don't know you. Your campaign consultant will get to know you. They definitely know the community where you're running, and they definitely do their research. And it's worth a lot more than the 25 bucks. Uh, let's see. Do, and you need a social media presence on your website. More and more, you need the Facebook and you need the Twitter. And you use the Facebook and the Twitter to drive people to your events and to drive people to your website to learn more about you. You drive them to your endorsements page, you drive them to your donations page, you drive them to an RSVP page. Okay? And have I exceeded my 15 minutes of fame? <laughs> then I could take questions, because I think I covered my main points. Are there any questions? Yes? I have a question about Facebook, because I am just learning. And I'm supposed to be updating it almost every day. No. Nah. Putting the stuff in that you know I've been advised to put in, like oh, had a great meal at such and such, and people don't really want to know that. No, <laughs> what no, am I supposed no, to put no. In there? <laughs> okay, great question. You want to be your brand for your political campaign. You do not want your personal Facebook out there working for you. Some people do it. I think it's a big mistake. You want to be your brand and you want consistency. You don't want people to friend you, you want people to like you. That's the difference between a personal and a branded site. Here's a, here's a good example. Uh, this is Shirley Zanes on <clears throat> Facebook. She's got uh, celebrating women in leadership with Congresswoman Woolsey, Councilmember Boren, First Women County Supervisor Helen Ruddy. So she has something that she did and brings these people together and it's on her Facebook and she can change it. She also has a picture of her with the dog in the park because they were celebrating the parks. <clears throat> it wasn't just I went to the park today. So you try to tie it in with think with the campaign and with issues that people have been present in. Right. So and I have a book for her. This uh, is her brand. That's, that's her branded one. She wanted to hook up her personal one to it and we were like uh, no, no, we don't want you to do that. Um, but I have an excellent book for you. I've read the book. I love the book. Uh, I would get the Facebook and Twitter books for dummies. Okay, they're great. They're, they're written beautifully. They're very concise. They're very friendly. They're very encouraging. And I just love the whole dummy series. I mean, every time they come out with another one, I, mean, I wish I could write one. You know, those people make lots of money. But you no, know, they're, they're, they're great books. And they're great resources. And they, they empower you. And then the other thing is to find somebody in your circle who, who does some social media. Maybe you can find a volunteer, or maybe you can hire that in your political consultant. Dottie's got, gotten quite good at it. And we did a, um, a branded site around redrawing the district lines so that Marin would not be taken along with San Francisco. We call this uniquely North Bay. And even though it only got it reached 65 likes, I mean, oh, the quality of the people who were liking it were decision makers in, the, in their own right. And so it was um, a success and we didn't get uh, our congressional district lumped in with San Francisco. So that was a good outcome for us, I think. But you can, you can do it. You can do this. Um, and and, in, and so, sometimes you may have to take on a lot of volunteer help in your campaign because money is tight. But your consultant can also help you make the proper decisions around that. What should you rely on volunteers for? You know, what should your budget really be for your reach? And what are your goals? Some, pe some people's goals may be just to make a splash for name recognition in a first run. Okay, so they get out there, they want their name run because they know they're going to run again for something else in the future. But they know they probably don't have that great of a chance or can't raise the money that's absolutely required to 
achieve um, the voter margin for victory. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Should your Twitter text be the same text as you have on your Facebook, or should you have something? Oh, well, they only give you those little characters, <laughs> that small number of oh, characters. Sure. So you've got to. Would you not mention anything on Twitter? You know, I think Twitter is really great for field work, too. Hi, I've done this block, you know, and uh, you want to have a meetup for coffee at Starbucks or something. Uh, Twitter is great to get out the last word on um, a, a news item. You know, drive people to some positive news item about you that just made uh, the Marin IJ or the Press Democrat. You know, get that out. So, really short blasts. You've, you've almost got to think in headlines and subheads. Okay? Anybody else? We, are, we will move on. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. Thank you very much. It was fun. <laughs>